And welcome once again to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where every week we attempt to bring it forth a subject into your, from our world into yours, which may have some practical meaning in, in your life. Uh, so before we begin, I'd like to ask everyone to reset their clocks to uh, Buddha Standard Time, which is the present moment. And I'd like to ask Reva, where are we, Reva? Right here. And what time is it? Right now. It's right now, and it's right now it's time for the educational rounds, and I'm so happy that everyone joined us today. And my name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility in Delmont, Pennsylvania, with uh, Dr. Safter Chaudhry as medical director. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues, and on my right would be... Maima Wajit. I'm a medical graduate, and I'm doing my externship here at Seclair. And on my left would be... I'm Reva, and I'm a medical graduate, and I'm shadowing Dr. Chaudhry. Shadowing Dr. Chaudhry. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chaudhry casts a big shadow, Reva. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand that uh, what we're dealing with today, everyone has crises in their life. Uh, and crises are viewed uh, from different perspectives, are they not? Uh, when some person knocks over a cup of coffee on the table, it may be, oh my, I'll go get a rag. And to another person, it could be tragic, mm -hmm. tragedy. So you were, uh, you were mentioning to me about a recent uh, cataclysmic event that happened in the world. Reva, could you share that with us? Yes, I was talking about a Nepal earthquake, which occurred on April 25th, I believe. So more than 5,000 people um, died and around 15,000 people got injured. And with that, there was avalanche um, at the Mount Everest. Um, I think, I believe 19 people died in that as well. So, so this, was a, this was a disaster of mm -hmm. monumental proportions. Mm -hmm. Loss of life, loss of home, uh, family, uh, perhaps livelihood, uh, a lot of health concerns. You aware, were you aware of that, Alana? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So, so for responders and what we call responders, when we think of responders, we think of uh, emergency medical technicians, the people who come in the ambulances. We think of police officers. We think of firefighters. Mm -hmm. We think of uh, we think of military individuals. Uh, but quite often, it can be it can be first responder can be you, or you, or any of you out there. So, what are some of the what are some rather than some of the do's on my mind. What would be some of the things that we would encourage people not to do? Um, do not like self-deploy. So what does that mean? Well, I think it means that self-deployment. Right, sure. So if you find out that somebody's just was diagnosed with cancer, if you find out that somebody's partner or parent or child uh, just died or some type of some type of loss uh, does that immediately assume that we should go there does that immediately assume that we should go there no no how come well um, I think sometimes it takes time to recover from those feelings and let that person sit for a while with those emotions. And we may not be the best equipped people to yeah. be there at that time. Uh, number one, where we, where we asked to go. So what, uh, what else are some of the things we do not do? Um, we should not assume that everyone who would have experienced a crisis situation or a disaster, uh, he wants or needs to talk to us. Absolutely. So what, what does that say? That not everybody who experiences yeah. these type of events ends mm -hmm. up with a, with a type of disorder, ends up with, mm -hmm. let's say, post-traumatic stress disorder. Not mm -hmm. everyone does that. Some people have more layers of resiliency and are more able to handle these type of situations than others. Mm -hmm. um, what, else, uh, what else do we not do? Uh, we should not assume that all individuals are, like, traumatized. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we can't we can't go to want someone and assume that they're mm -hmm. traumatized. Mm -hmm. Okay, we we can't we can't make something. So what what are the, some some of the things we do we do do? Uh, we should make ourselves uh, visible and available for them. And yes. So quite often, what that means, Riva Omaima, is being mm -hmm. available, just being yeah. a presence. Mm -hmm. Okay, being a presence, being there. 
sometimes means a whole lot more to people than what words can say. When someone says stuff suffered a, a loss, a catastrophic event, are there really any words that can be said that, that can cure the use of that situation in the moment? No. Perhaps just your just your just your presence, the presence, the presence of another human being. Okay, uh, what else uh, do we not try to do, Amano? We should not try to meet the individuals and we should let their needs guide us. Absolutely, absolutely. So we would go to someone and say, mm -hmm. well, you need to do this, you need to do that. Let's, let's mm -hmm. let them have their voice. Exactly. Do we, do we need people to let, let people have their voice and absolutely. let them express their concerns, mm -hmm. let, me, let them express their feelings? And earlier, Reaver, you were talking to me about what one of the most important things that an individual can do with another human being. It's listening. Talk, talk to us mm -hmm. about that. I think uh, in those situations, there, there are no words that can heal other person. It's just you have to be in, uh, with that person to support them. And one of the best things you can do is to listen to them, what they want, uh, what, their, what their needs are. And that's all you can do at that moment. Absolutely. So in the time that you've been here at Seclair, which is a mindfulness, mindfulness, excuse me, mindfulness-based practice on my mind, tell me some of the things that you've uh, picked up on about active listening. Tell me about, tell me about your sessions with Dr. Chaudhary. Um, the patient used to start feeling comfortable as we kept on listening to them and they felt that they could share most of their emotions with us. And that way they would feel um, much more relieved mm -hmm. by sharing their distress with us and because we are actively listening to them. Sure. Every person has a story. And sometimes we assume that we know that story better than they do. Absolutely. And, and often that involves a lot of ego, does it not? Mm -hmm. And I want to add one point. Please. Uh, I think most of the time we are afraid of showing our vulnerabilities. Yeah. and. Just, just because we don't want that other judge us, or show, uh, or they assume us as a weak person. So, and we don't ask for help. So, listening can be, listening can be one of those medium actually, to let that person to come out of their zone, and let them be how they are. So, when a person has experienced some type of a loss, when they're feeling some grief, uh, what are some of our natural inclinations. What are, what are some of our first uh, efforts to do? We want to comfort them, do we not? Yeah. We, want, we want to have, make them stop crying, don't we? We, yeah. we want to cheer them up a little bit. We want to yeah. make them happy. However, however, uh, there's some there's some different thoughts that, 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 that we certainly have on that. So would you, would you share a little bit of uh, our mindful thoughts of grief? Um. Basically, tears are the heart attempts at healing. Yes. And they water the dry and arid places of our souls. Yes. Then they bring us back to life and feeling. And our feelings are trying to expose our pain. And we should not do them the injustice of denial. Absolutely. When a person's grieving, they should grieve. When a person has tears, we have to ask them, what do those tears say? Those tears, those tears say something. So what we ask people is to give a voice to those tears, Reva. Mm -hmm. We ask people to give a voice to those tears. When you sit with a, a friend sometime and they're, then they're weeping or they're crying, ask them. Don't, don't ask them what's sad. Ask them, ask them, ask them what, what is that? What are those tears saying? Give a voice to those tears. Mm -hmm. Tell me what those tears are saying. So the idea, there, there's dry and arid parts of our body dry and arid parts of our soul and quite often the tears are our, are our feelings coming out and feelings are so very important and attempting to deny feelings is is a pretty 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 tough yeah. thing it's a pretty tough thing so what we want to do is first of all we want to we want to contact these folks mm -hmm. we want to engage and, and engaging simply can be simply sitting with people we want to make an active effort in providing safety and comfort Mm -hmm. We want to assure, even holding someone's hand and telling them, assuring them, you're with me, you're with me, you're with me, you're safe. Let's breathe together. Let's just breathe together. When we, when we 
people can hold it, hold your hand and, and just breeze together. So we want to provide practical assistance with them. One of the worst things we can do is tell everybody, tell somebody that everything's going to be okay, mm -hmm. that everything's going to work out. Oh yes. As it may not. Yes. Uh -huh. It may Absolutely. not. It may not work out okay. So we want to we want to have something in our bag where we have community contacts. We can refer them to the social infrastructure. We can social, we can provide them with, here's the name of uh, the Salvation Army, here's the name of some grief counselors, here's the name of a food bank, here's the name of the Department of Public Assistance. Have all these things with you. If someone asks you and says, well, what should I do? And if you look at them and says, well, gee, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the idea would be to to have those have those resources with you, and and have them handing okay, and provide them linking with collaborative sources. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we can't handle this all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to be linked linked in with other individuals. So, um, so would you talk would you talk a little bit about how we deal with emotion regulation? Um, I think. You cannot control those emotions. You have to just sit with them and observe them without being judgmental about mm -hmm. it. That's what is mindfulness, and that's what we teach over here as well. And the next thing you can do is try to recognize those emotions and label them. What do you, tell, me, tell, tell us what you mean by that, Reva. Like, if it is sadness, or if it is anger, or if it is frustration, whatever you are feeling, just label them. So and try to recognize what you are feeling. So if you were labeling your emotions, what would you say to yourself? Right now, I'm feeling anxious. You're feeling anxious. Mm -hmm. So you can tell yourself, I am feeling I'm anxious. anxious. Mm -hmm. Or you can tell yourself, I'm feeling angry, or I'm happy, or I'm mm -hmm. sad. How often do we try to distance ourselves from emotions? Because we don't want to feel them. We try to block them. However, unless we're able to identify and label what we're feeling, we're not going to be able to deal with them. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be able to deal with them. And that's when we quite often get into an emotional mind. I understand that uh, Dr. James Gordon was on, uh, someone told me was on, I got an email, he was on 60 Minutes uh, not too terribly long ago. I was fortunate enough to, uh, to meet him. Uh, a few years ago, and uh, he takes um, rescue teams into um, refugee camps like in Syria, in the Gaza Strip, mm -hmm. and in Africa, probably over to Nepal, places like that, to help provide some psychological first aid to these particular individuals. So my good thoughts go out to, uh, go out to Dr. Gordon. Mm -hmm. wherever he may be today. And should you have any questions or comments about what we've discussed today, perhaps uh, Omaima could share with everyone out there how they could direct their concerns, comments, questions. So if you want to continue with the conversation, you can like us on Facebook plus on the Google Plus or follow us on Twitter under Seclero Life. You can also find this and other grand rounds on youtube.com slash video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and Hi Heart Radio. And please visit www.seclero.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. Absolutely. Any closing thoughts, Reva? Well, deep breath. Deep breathing, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, closing thoughts from you, Mama? Um, you can speak out your grief to people, and the best part would be doing mindfulness and meditation and with the nature, I would say in particular, and try and appreciate the nature. Absolutely. So when someone's speaking their grief, what's the best thing you or I could do when someone's speaking the grief? What's the best thing you and I could do? First is listening. Absolutely. Absolutely. Provide them a place of provide them a place mm -hmm. of sense and sense and comfort. And my hope is that everyone out there has a place of sense and comfort and you can create that place your own self uh, simply by, by by being still. Simply by mm -hmm. being still and listening to things in silence perhaps you've never heard. 
So that's the Thank idea. You. And as always, we're going to provide a free prescription for today. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we... Fish without bait. We fish without bait. And there will be no expectations when we fish without bait. And as always, your assignment for today is to do something kind for yourself. Something kind for yourself. Until the next time, and we certainly appreciate thoughts, questions, and comments. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. We'll be with you next week. Thank you.